Hello winning game fans, for as much as I love action roguelites, more on that in that video linked up there, the turn-based variants do have their charm as well, so here's a look at upcoming titles, including deck builders, RPGs, and even a traditional roguelike or two thrown into the mix. I love mechs and deck builders, so we begin with Jupiter Moon's Mecha, a game that combines exactly those two things, but interestingly, places you in the cockpit like Mech Warrior, which is an interesting UI decision. There's an inventory and equipment system for your mech, a skill tree for the pilot, a main story campaign and 4 playable mechs with a clean looking art style that looks great. Singaporean developer Spring Loaded of course gets a special mention with decks and dungeons, the self-described turn-based deck-building monster-collecting roguelite RPG. Not too many details but I do love my monster taming games, so to see this incorporated into a roguelite is neat, so stay tuned and I'll let you know closer to release. Developer OneShark has made some interesting titles, most of which are pseudo idol games like Chicken Assassin and Ultra Savage, and as one of the most distinct art styles out there, so to see them turn their attention to a roguelite deck builder, Doors of Insanity was of interest. While the original trailer is narrated, I've edited that down for brevity, but basically, your heroes seem to be rather fragile, which is expected for this type of game. You can summon 7 different types of allies, from demonic bugs to wizards, build magical weapons and use a variety of cards, all with an awesome look so I cannot wait. This is releasing in early access next month, so certainly keep an eye on it. The thing that drew me to Obsidian Prince has to be the art style, choosing to use voxels but looks well done. While you're exploring and adventuring through endless procedurally generated dungeons, this does also have an overworld map and town building as well, and developers do take note. If you have some meta town building elements, I'm definitely going to take notice. Add to that some deck building elements, a whimsical and fun sounding track in your trailer, and classic turn based dungeon crawling combat and you got a winner. One upcoming game with an interesting art style is The Endless Word, a roguelite deck builder, but instead of cards, you're using dice instead, but the randomness of dice makes it even more interesting. Of course, you can stack the deck by some dice loading mechanics, where controlling RNG is important for such a game, with a number of synergy systems between the player and units, items and elements being central as well. Still no release date, but it does look very good, and it's always nice to see something a little different. Battle Barn Tactics is just a fun looking book light title where you're able to capture and tame every animal, with some elements of chess as well since animals move in unique patterns, and this does look to be a little into the breach like. This is from developer Tim Rustwick from the Game Dev Underground YouTube channel, and best of all, it's releasing sometime next month.
There's something to be said about the elegance of the minimalism of Beat the Clock, a roguelite RPG that does look impressive. It's another turn-based party-based RPG using node-based exploration as well, but one difference here is that your heroes and enemies automatically cycle through with the frontmost character attacking Nyx and then goes to the back of the line, looking like it could lead to some interesting strategic implications. The story is that an abyssal creature has awakened and enslaved the world, leading to the end of humanity, but a genius chronomancer has found a way to send heroes back into the past, hopefully finding a way to stop this before it occurs. There will be 20 available heroes, where those that have been shown off do look interesting in design, so I'm looking forward to this. Under old forgotten town. Ancient evil woke deep down. Demons, beasts, now you must fight. Play your cards to prove your might. Go alone, with a friend or two. Choose together what you'll do. Shape the history sung by Bard. Developer Think Trunk has done tremendously well with the Diablo-like Book of Demons, which was the first entry of the ambitious Return to Games project, wanting to make seven titles inspired by classic PC games, where Hellcard is an interesting entry since it's a spin-off of their first title. Evidently, it uses the same papercraft art style but is a defense title of sorts where you battle enemies from all directions, once again innovating in this space which I'm happy to see. Reductively, Across the Obelisk looks like deck building Darkest Dungeon, but I'm certainly not complaining since I do like those two elements. It has a classic 4 character party setup with positional combat, where your party of adventurers traverses the land in search of fame and fortune. There are 16 playable characters and interestingly, this even allows for co-op multiplayer where each player controls one hero, so to see this genre branch out is pretty neat. Cool art style and interesting fantasy races makes this of interest and I want to know more about the overall structure and narrative of the game. I did mention Ultimate Adam, Caverns of Chaos when covering the best upcoming indie games of February and of course have to mention it again in this video since it's the perfect place for it. The sequel to one of the classic roguelites originally released in 1994 is something pretty insane to think about since we live in a world where a 26 year old game can get a sequel, but if it's anything like the original, should have compelling enough systems for it to provide near infinite replayability. I know that the traditional roguelike is a difficult sell, especially when you do have so many modern flashy variants, but if you're at all interested in video game history, I would implore you to check this out. The Hand of Merlin makes us a Thorin legend with sci-fi horror, so that immediately got my attention, and it does have quite the pedigree as well, with developers that worked on the Talos Principle, Phoenix Point and Sirius Sam, so it's nice to see developer Crow Team branch out into even more genres. Knights vs Aliens is an interesting aesthetic, with the now classic FTL style node based exploration map and random events as the core structure. Tactics Combat looks good as well, so it's a no brainer pick for this list. Your world has 
has been cast into a dark spiral. Place enchanted cards along a harrowing loop. Summon monsters, build cathedrals, and remember your world. Loop Hero is another Devolver Digital published title and is a deck building strategy game where you place buildings and tiles on the map while your hero loops around the world, having an awesome pixel art style and I think the same narrator as that for Enter the Gungeon, but given the pedigree, I expect big things from this. Your world. Many moons ago, mortals rose up against me and chased me down. They were led by demon hunters. Wretched beings, incapable of seeing the beauty of a corrupted world. My creatures and demons gave everything they had in the fight. But it was not enough. I was forced to leave the world of the living. Weakened, I returned to hell to survive. For years I consumed fresh souls to regain my power. But their numbers are fast diminishing. I cannot wait anymore. I must reclaim my rightful place. It is time to gather my forces once more. Those who signed a pact with me will do as I order. They will spread terror and corruption in my name. One of the most impressive looking roguelite RPGs is the unfortunately generic sounding Rogue Lords, an RPG title where you play as the devil and have an absolute rogues gallery of legendarily evil characters as your party members, from Dracula, Bloody Mary, the Hitler's Horseman, Baron Samedi and more, having to battle against demon hunters as you seek to reclaim your power and influence over the world. I love the arts and animation, with the combat system being of interest as well. On top of standard turn-based combat and abilities, since you are the devil, you're able to use collected souls to do things like alter the UI, reducing enemy health for example, so a meta layer on top of what looks like great combat has me intrigued. One of my most anticipated titles is Dungeon Drafters, a deck building turn based roguelike with awesome pixel art. If you played Crown Trick from 2020, you might see some similarities where the focus is on elemental magic and the synergies that you can create using the spells. Quite a classic dungeon delving experience, although it does have an adventurer town hub world in between runs and even a fishing minigame, which is something that I love in all games. But to be honest, I was already sold due to the look. While the Kickstarter campaign did state a tentative release window of July 2021, in the developer's most recent update in December, they hope to get the game out sometime this year, so wishing them all the best and I cannot wait to get hands on. The highest ranking TBA title on this list is The Last Spell, one which I've been looking forward to for a long time but has yet to officially confirm a release date. It's They Are Billions meets Tactics RPG, where you're playing as warriors fighting against massive hordes of demons while protecting mages who are trying to cast the last spell in order to banish all magic from the world. Of course, I'm a big fan of the pixel art, but the attacks and abilities in this look great as well, since you're able to dispatch of large groups of enemies all at the same time. Combined with the strategy and RPG elements, makes it the title that I'm looking forward to taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos, and I will see you after the jump. Yeah.